Welcome to the Rad Hole for another episode of The Whole Conversation. Today's guest is Nathaniel Pulley from Archers. And uh, welcome to the Rad Hole. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Really. Great. I have, uh, I've been watching you guys for a while, and it's, uh, there's been lots of interesting content coming from you guys, and it's just, it's just like uh, passion pouring over uh, everywhere. Like, it just everything you guys do, I'm just like, that's th- those guys got it. Like you guys get it, dude. That's like the ah, that shucks. That's the sweetest shit. Uh, that's awesome. Um, that's just really nice to, to hear. Shit, cool. Uh, thank you for saying that. First off, uh, yeah, um, we're, we've been having a lot of fun with it, man. Um, I I I love the music we're making. I think it's some really cool stuff. Even the covers, they're, they're just kind of fun, you know. But yeah. like, they're a lot of fun. People like them, and you know, it gets us. It it, it kind of it makes people want to talk to us a little bit more. They, they like, you know, we get, we get a look to interact with a lot more people because of it, you know, and a yeah. lot of those people find our originals and, uh, and those are, those are the ones that we really care about. The ones that like kind of dig a little deeper, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we, we try to do the same. Yeah. Cause the, uh, the covers are always really good to kind of, uh, use as like a, a conversion type of song, you know, where you got Absolutely. people that they're like, Oh, I like that song. And then they listen to your version. They're like, Oh, maybe I'll check them out. And that, yeah. that seems to be a really good way to get people into just it. It's essentially massive billboards, you know? And, uh, I mean, it sounds crass, but it's really what they are. They're a lot of fun to do. Uh, I'll never deny that. I, I love doing them, and I'm probably going to probably do one or two more over the years. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's not something we want to be, like, known for or anything yeah. like that. It is fun. And uh, so we're probably going to we'll probably do it more eventually. Yeah. Uh, but we've got, we've got some new stuff that we really want to show people. And... I, I'm really excited about it, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's great, man. Like, uh, I uh, I had so, a lot of people respond really, uh, really, really, really positively to um, the newest cover you guys did that close to me. Yeah. And uh, so cool. you know, I, I was like, no, you you need to check these guys out. Keep an eye on them because they're they're doing it. Like they they've got the right shit going on. They're that's so cool, man. We're just we're just doing our best. Uh, we don't know everything. We've just messed up a lot, so we know like how to. You know, a few ways not to do it. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, uh, you know, we're not. We're just we're just like trying to do the best we can, and we're really just loving it as as it goes, really. Yeah. And like my favorite thing is just getting to meet so many people, dude. Like people like there's a lot of great crap people out there, but there's a lot of really cool ones out there too. And yeah. every now and again they show up to our shows, and it's really awesome to meet them. Uh, most people who come out to shows, man, they're just they're just the sweetest people. The people who really engage and stuff like that, and you know that's the, that's the most you can do to support artists, and we feel that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I I uh. That's the thing I really missed is uh, I I used to be one of those guys that was playing shows. You know, I would have like three shows a week at least all the time. And I did that for a handful of years. Like I just like eat, sleep, breathe, music, shows, shows, recording, music, 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 just all the time. And then life changed because all of a sudden I was a dad. I had, you know, a different job. And then, mm-hmm. you know, like marriage and everything. And I took a hiatus for a while and I really missed the road and meeting people and just the whole experience. Cause I do it for love of the game, man. Like I'll, I'll play in yeah. somebody's bathroom if they want me to. And like, so now I really think I found myself with doing stuff like this. Cause I can still meet people, have great conversations, um, form new relationships. I can help people, give them a new platform for their stuff. And, uh, I still satisfy my need to entertain. It's just yeah. uh, it's just an internet stage now. I mean, it's it's a whole new it's it's a, it's a whole new ball game than what it used to be. You know, I I've I've only started really making music in the internet age, so I wasn't a part of it beforehand. It's only been the last ten years or so. But before that, things were a lot different, and a lot of people are really there's a lot of people that are really starting to get the hang of it. You know, and yeah. I'm not necessarily we're not necessarily one of them, but like we kind of figured out a couple things here and there, and trying to trying to just use those tools and like it, it, we try to share it with everyone we can too like all of our friends and other musicians like uh if, if they it, you know it's just you know, share the knowledge you have with each other so that everyone can kind of come up with it you know yeah yeah that's that's a lot of what we do here is just that's basically what we're about it's just a giant brotherhood of knowledge and help like that's yeah. that's what we do we're just like a lot of people get the wrong idea because even not we weren't even sure like how to explain it to people we just knew that we wanted to be different and we wanted to be positive mm-hmm. so it it's 
it's getting down to the point now where we're able to explain it to people better and we're focused in, you know, I think the right direction, more goal oriented. And, um, yeah. you know, it's just, it's for me, it's all about helping people, man. Like I just, I want to, I want to make something that's bigger than just, you know, you and me and stuff. And maybe even here when we're not here anymore, like I, you know, yeah. like I, I, I just want people to, to quit acting like it's the battle of the bands and make it like the brotherhood of the bands. I feel that, man. I feel that. And that's something that I think that that's one thing that I'm, I'm really happy to say. I think we, we kind of hit on the head one because we're just friendly dudes <laughs> for the most part. So we just kind of love everybody we, we, we hang out with. Uh, because of that, we're just, we have all these bands that are from the greater Wisconsin and Midwest area that are, are just like, we're all, it's like, we're all really, really close, almost like family, you know? Yeah. And that's what it's, that's what my favorite thing about today's scene kind of is, is that it seems like everyone's kind of in it for each other, you know? Yeah. At least yeah. around this part. Like, I, I don't, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but like, I've noticed some serious love among bands in the Midwest uh, in the last couple of years, dude. And I think that's super healthy and it's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always really healthy when you can have more of a supportive, uh, shared mm -hmm. environment instead of feeling like it's dog eat dog, you know, or like the rest of the stuff that's going on around you. Yeah. Can confirm. Well, so what, what got you started doing, uh, doing vocals and stuff, man? Uh, I've been singing since I was maybe five or six years old. Uh, I never really paid much attention to it. It was something everyone in my family can do. Um, so that was, just a really big part of my life but i always liked the fact that i was kind of good at it even then so i <laughs> uh, I, I did my best to like stand out in really horrible ways you know like i was raised um in a baptist church and homeschooled so like the only outlet i had was choir yeah so i would sing in a men's choir at like seven eight years old and just make a complete fool of myself because i was trying to be a rock star in front of all like you know 17 grandmothers and you know everything else but like uh yeah but it, it just didn't matter to me because that's what i was just kind of doing and i didn't think i never kind of gave myself any credit for singing uh for many years because i was more focused on i thought i had, should be a guitarist i tried piano for a while i actually started out making music with drums that was my first instrument then uh, i kind of moved on to other things and started doing other things because i didn't want to be the focus you know I didn't want to be the guy up front. I didn't really want to be, I didn't want the spotlight. I just wanted to make music. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but what ended up happening is, you know, you're in really crappy bands over the years. You do all these the really dumb moves. You do all the dumb stuff. And I just kept realizing that as I was playing the background, the things were, you know, exactly the way that I, that things were never, like, I always thought maybe I could do it a little better, you know, and that's not being rude. I just thought like maybe the, but maybe he's not doing it exactly the way it, to me that it sounds like it should be, you know? Yeah. I know that sounds a little control freaky, but like when you write a song and it's kind of, you know, especially something that means a lot to you, uh, it's supposed to be on a certain way in your head, right? And it may be beautiful to everyone else, but to you it'll always be, you know, slightly less than. And so one day uh, we, we had that, one of the bands was kind of, fizzling out and I was starting up another one and I just kind of I was trying to play drums in that band because I didn't want to be the singer again uh, but my friend was like Polly you can sing just do this so I, I was like ah fine and I took to it uh, it just it just felt right I mean, like I always I'm a big guy I always kind of had the self esteem issues that was part of why I wanted to be in the background you know it's something that people should talk about if you have them you know but like uh, and so like I was always super nervous to be that, but then like I got it, I got a teeny eye, tiny little taste of it, and even though it was a horrible band, I I loved it. I loved every second of it. I loved the performance. It felt like a dance, even though it wasn't like dancing. You know, so I, I don't expect. I love to dance like that, right? I can't dance in real life, like real dancing. This is how this is my dance. You know what I mean? So yeah. I get to express myself. It's it's a lot of fun. And it, it makes me feel great doing it. So I just was like, well, I better get better at this and just kind of kept kept pushing and yeah. haven't really stopped since yeah well you have a great voice man like uh my first reaction honestly the first thing that come out of my mouth the very first time somebody sent me a link to one of your songs i said big boy's got some pipes <laughs> like i yeah. i was just like oh man i was like and then i just rewound it and i was like oh listen to that i was like see that oh 
mm. <laughs> and I just kept listening to it, and I was just like, I, I like that. I like that because, like, I think it was what it is, is, like, you, like, your your story is extremely similar to mine. I was more exposed. I wasn't homeschooled or anything like that. But your story is extremely similar to mine, and I always ended up on the drums because I was the only one that could play them. Yeah. But I ended up doing the vocals and the drums all the time, and I hated that because it made me, wow. like, 70% at both of them. Yep, exactly, and that's kind of what I've told a lot. I have, we had, I've had drummers in the past who are like, let me sing. I was like, no, just do your thing. Just do, yeah. do your thing. Yeah. Just do it well, do it 100%. Just do the one thing all the way. Like, yeah, so. but when I was listening to your voice, I was like, man, his voice is like, it, it's similar to mine, but different completely at the same time. Do you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, yeah. It, like, you, you hear, like you hear people who you can kind of relate to their voice when they're singing. And like how they do things, like you, you've got some soul in your voice, and you, you can tell that. And that I, I mean, I like to, I like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you, you can tell that, and the way that you carry yourself when you're doing it, it is part of it. And I, that's how I am when I get into my moments where I know it's time to shake my finger at people and get pretty with it. You know, like yeah, yeah. That's that, that's how I feel. Like all of a sudden, just like a new person hits the stage because I just went from screaming like a monster at these people, and now I'm breaking it down and just being like. Mm, <laughs> you know yeah and so whenever i hear somebody do that in a similar manner that i i would either hear it and think it should go when it's cut leading up or the way that i do things i'm like mm, that just hits me right there <laughs> i know i know exactly what you're talking about man. i mean it's kind of a, a point of pride for me i'm not gonna lie uh i love i think i've after all the years of being you know, crappy and you know learning and, and growing, uh, there's a lot more for me to learn. But I, I think I'm kind of doing all right. I, I really like the what what I've gotten out of my voice, you know. And screaming's still new to me. I've only been doing that for about five years. Yeah. Uh, but I've become more comfortable with it since we've been back on the scene. And uh, I, I'm really excited to show people <laughs> like the. Hey, I'm not just someone you have to like clip pieces together to make it work. You know, I, I can actually do this. I promise. Yeah. So I really stoked people to hear our new music. Good, good. So uh, how did you? Uh, how how long have you guys been together, and how did you get together? Okay, um, I joined up with Ben uh, before Archers was a thing. Uh, me and him uh, were together in an older group uh, that was sort of an iteration, an iteration of what Archers became. Uh, and we started, we were assigned to a small label, uh, currently defunct. Uh, they kind of think, you know, the classic story, band makes bad decision, you know, bad decision gets worse, and everything goes to shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how that was. So Archers was born <coughs> out of, out of kind of out of the fire, you know, it was, uh, this, uh, our, the, old, the old band crashed and burned, and it crashed and burned hard, you know, and. Uh, we had, we picked up the pieces and we came back with this and we released that back of Bones video and that was back in uh, 2015 I believe yeah. uh, was when that came out and that's when Archers really started up and that's when we kind of we because at that point the old band was based in Chicago I'm from Madison born and raised uh, so we ended up com coming up here and that's when Archers really took root it was 15 2015 yeah, yeah. you guys have uh guys have done quite a lot in a short amount of time that's pretty impressive actually thank you that's really cool to hear it doesn't feel like it it really doesn't especially because um in 2016 we actually took like a, a year and a half two year long hiatus we didn't know if we were coming back and then we came back with the bleed for this video but so it's it really is cool to see how far we've gotten in such a period, short period of time considering that we've only actually been active for about three years yeah you know yeah which also the 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 song and the video the bleed for this it very very nice. You can thank Jesse Chifo for the video on that, dude. He is uh, he did a fantastic job. Him and Gage and uh, and Brittany, they all did a fantastic job on that video, and we were super proud with how it turned out. And yeah, it was the perfect way to come back, honestly, in my opinion. The, the song, the message, the music, and the video all just tied in perfectly to what I was trying to say at that point. Yeah, and I I couldn't be happier. And people gave us so much love for it, and that was awesome. You know, I love when people really enjoy the stuff we make and it just it, it makes the whole experience worth it. You know, because I'm sure, you know, we both made songs that, have, that nobody's liked. Yes. <laughs> so it feels real good when someone's into it, you know. Yes. 
Uh, but yeah, that just, I don't know, I just like making people pe- music with people dig. And I love hearing that people like it. It makes me feel, that's what I, it's kind of what I live for, you know? Yeah. It's a reason I spend so much money every, uh, you know, all the time to be making this stuff, being out the road, uh, so that I can connect with people through this music that I make. And, yeah. Uh, it's really cool when you finally get to see that happen. Yeah. Bit, you know? What's even cooler, man, is when somebody like me can sit back and watch it happen and then sit down and have a conversation with you like this and get the inside scoop on it. And, like, you know, you see how much that you really appreciate the people appreciating what you do and put into it. Absolutely, man. I mean, I get, I, I mean, especially since the cover came out, it's been a pretty steady, constant stream of people just like random people. I don't know from like across the country hitting me up, being like, "Oh my God, you're so cool!" And I'm like, "No, I'm not. But thank you." Uh, you know, and uh, like you, you should don't hang out with me. You'll be disappointed. But uh, no, I, I love it. It's really fun, and I love it because it's really it's it's led to some physical interactions as well. Uh, yeah, I've met a few people lately uh, who have. Uh, I wouldn't have met without that cover, and that was, that was really neat. I um, ran into someone at a party who had seen the cover, and he's like, dude, it's really cool. You're just you know, hanging out. I'm like, you're, you're all my friends. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that. So I'm down to be friends if you're watching and you're wondering. Hit me up. Uh, probably add you. Yeah, that's what I told people. I was like, uh, I think uh, one of my friends <clears throat> just the other day, she uh, liked the video. <laughs> and uh, actually, it was a heart reaction. Oh, and uh, we we appreciate those heart reactions. Yeah, and you were right. You know, you were right on top of it, right back with a heart. You know, from your personal page. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, that's absolutely. that's why I was like, no, I was like, just definitely keep an eye on these guys. They're extremely, you know, humble people, down to earth people. Because I've been paying attention. Like I, I I get into it. I pay attention to more than just the stuff you release. Like I I pay attention to what you say and the things that other Thank people you. do. We really, I, I mean, it's really cool to hear that because we try to, we live our lives as though people are paying attention. That's what we try to do, you know, because there are people like you who are genuine, awesome people that, you know, they notice that shit because it means something. It's like, oh, look, you're active. You're active here. You're, yes. you're not just going to slap something onto the Facebooks and then just be like, all right, you like it. But no, and like, it's kind of gotten away from me because the notifications, dude, there's so many shares on this video right now, dude. It's, it, it's stupid. Yeah. And, uh, there are so many shares on it, but like for the first like 15, 1800 shares, we commented on every single one. So thank you. We, we do it every time. So if you comment on our shit, we're going to say thank you because you took the time out of your life to do something that I don't do half the time. Like, exactly. Like, so I'm on it. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna appreciate that. And it's not gonna be some copy paste message. It's yeah. probably gonna be pretty similar to thank you, but like, yeah, uh, in some form. But it's really just gonna, it, it is me typing it out every single time, just saying hey, thank you. And like, uh, it's not like, it's not anything special to get a message from me. I'll hit you up for anything. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> And see, like, I understand that, you know, that you would be overwhelmed with a lot of that stuff. And that's why I wanted to make sure and personally tell the people that were commenting on it, on, you know, the stuff that I shared, you know, hey, these guys are are somebody to pay attention to. They're good guys, you know, and stuff like that. You know, that way, if for some reason you didn't see those to be able to heart react, I could let them know they needed to pay attention and you did appreciate it. You know, like that's that's really cool. We also try, I mean, if we can't get to you individually, we're, we we make a post. The like one thing we love doing is those behind the scenes videos. The one I posted the other day, it's just, it just cho- kind of shows off our goofy side. Yeah. Like, just us being dudes, hanging out, making music, having fun. And then we like, like to put it with a nice heartfelt message. And we like, I can't list all the names, but like, if you had messaged me, I would know if that name had liked it, our video at one point. I promise you. Yeah. Like, I can't I can't spit it out right now, but I'd be like I remember seeing that name at one point because you know I we remember these people because they're the ones that especially the ones that start to like make a trend of liking things you know they like, yeah. you, you notice these people yeah. I'm sure you, you you're active on social media as well you know uh, you start to notice people when they interact with your things more you know mm-hmm. uh, their name just starts popping up and so they kind of just kind of become part of the community that just exists in your head and then kind of in, the, in the, the heart of social media. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of one of the beauties of it all. One of them, there's a lot of other things, but like that's, yeah. that's one of the nice things about it. Yeah, it's, it's it's also a strange thing at the same time, man, that like social media, like you can kind of create your own world to live in. 
And it's it's just absolutely it's just absolutely. And that can almost be dangerous sometimes, you know. Yeah. Because people get lost in their own realities, but you know, that's why it's nice when you see all the a lot of like genuine people interacting, you know, because it's, it's not hard anymore. Most of us know how to how to weed through the all the the crap on the internet at this point. You know, we've been doing it long enough. So, but it, it, so you recognize it when you see someone being genuine, and those people are valuable. You know, yeah. In every way. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think one of the things that I, like, was really overwhelming for me when we started this was I had a lot of people that I knew or, like, people that were affiliated with the stuff that we were doing is when I started seeing those repeat people that I didn't know. And that's when it started really hitting me. I'm like, okay, we're getting somewhere. We're gaining traction, you know, and that's that's really, really great to see. And it's it's a very uh, humbling and ego boosting experience at the yeah. same time like it's yeah, exactly it really is and you're not sure how to use that because you've been constantly begging for people's attention for so long you know when they finally give it to you you're like ah what you know uh but no for me it was the first time i sent an order out to a merch order out to a state that i had never been to that was that was a really cool moment i remember uh because i i've been sending them out to our friends all right we'd only been active for like a couple months and the bleed for this video had just come out uh and I had been sending out orders to like people I had known or, or throughout the Midwest and whatnot. And then we just got a random order from some person I had never heard of. Uh, he'd never, as far as I could tell, he had never interacted on our site. Uh, but like, he just bought this random order. And he liked, he bought a CD and he bought a couple shirts. And I was like, I don't know this guy. He's just buying my stuff. That's the coolest thing. And that was, that was it for me. Yeah. Yeah, the, the big moment for me, I think I've mentioned it on the show here before, but you weren't here. The big moment for me was when uh, we had traveled probably a good eight hours away. We were a couple states away, I think. And I went to play, we played the first note of the song, and I went to take the first deep breath to do the first vocals of the song because it was one of those songs where it kind of just dropped and I just went, (gasps) and then just yelled and it busted in. And when I did that and I raised my arms up the drum set and I took my deep breath, I looked out at the crowd and all of them were going, (gasps) and I was like, oh, shit, (laughs) you know, and then they all just started screaming with me. And I was like, I don't know any of you. And it was just like it hit me so hard. And like I've got goosebumps right now, man, just thinking about it. That was the first time where it was really like, all right, this is it. Like this is the moment. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, man, I, I feel that. Like there was a moment um, so we played a show with Growing. You know Growing. Uh, I'm certain you've heard of them. Yes. They're some of our best friends. We played a show with them way back when, and it was when we were kind of first like coming out of the scene. We had been here for like a year. People were just starting to kind of get into us a little bit, and uh, we had that Bag of Bones song out, and we did a live video at one point at Frequency when that was still a thing, and. Uh, uh, there was one point in the video where you could clearly see me getting caught off guard because like there's this one point where everything drops out and I do the one all my bridges burn and bullshit and I I just like caught my breath for a second and like I heard that me singing and I was just like what the hell and like there was a good like 20 people like starting to sing that part and it just like hit me I was like ah oh, this is cool dude I mean like most of them were my friends it was in a hometown show but like it means a lot to me. Like my yeah. friends love my music. I love that. Yeah. And uh, if you love my music, there's a very good chance we're gonna end up being friends. So I yeah. just kind of it just kind of ends up being the same thing. Yeah. See that that's that's something that a lot of people don't have, man. You're really fortunate to have those kind of friends too, because Absolutely. I I come from a really small place. Uh, like well, I literally live in a village in the middle of nowhere, okay. and we don't have a scene of any kind. So we kind of had to create our own thing. And so many of my friends have no clue about any of this stuff, but they're there to support the hell out of me, you know? Like, everything I do, they're wearing my shirt, they're at my show, they do, you know, they do things. I mean, they, none of them really have timing or can sing or anything, God bless all of them, but it just, they're there, and that's what means the most to me. That's awesome. That's really cool. I mean, I, I didn't... I didn't know about the whole scene thing before, and then I was, I'm from, I, I moved to Madison when I was like 18. I lived like 20 minutes away in a town called Stoughton. So that's where I went to high school. And uh, it was kind of a no one town too, you know? Uh, so like, I was always trying to put on these shows in the local coffee shop and, and 
that's kind of I so I, I know exactly what you're talking about where you had to kind of like begin something and honestly it didn't really take uh, after I left high school and moved out here moved to Madison nothing kept going so like it wasn't it wasn't exactly successful but I tried and it was fun uh, they still do they do they do have shows every now and again but nothing nothing like it like I tried to make it but it yeah. was a good time man I liked I liked it and uh, it was really cool. But then I got to know a lot of people up here and this scene actually, you know, like there's some really cool people up here, man. I, I love this town so much. I feel really fortunate to be from, from Madison. It's, it's, uh, it's a really cool city. It's like, I don't know, it's got all the, it's got all the stuff you want from a city without all the things you don't want as far as I'm concerned. So I, I, I kind of like the simplicity of it all. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've been up that direction a handful of times, and it's I, it always feels a lot like home, but almost better when I'm up that direction. I always enjoyed being in like Wisconsin and Michigan and Minnesota. Yeah. I actually I've got family in Minnesota area and stuff, oh, cool. so I like yeah. um, uh, and the the Rockford and Chicago area. I've been up there a lot. Yeah. Um, I I just I think it's I don't know. I I kind of feel what you're saying about that. Like it's got a different feel. Like once mm -hmm. you reach out of this area, you really start to realize and sometimes appreciate things about where you where you come from in your scene. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, dude. I mean, uh, I I actually we've we've been lucky. We've had almost 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 all good experiences in the places we go. Uh, we've we've really haven't had any horrible flops or shows i mean a few of them were like you know whatever but like every time it was like the people that showed were good people it was really good to meet all of them you know so like every city in some way in one way or another has been good to us and so i i just i want to keep that going so yeah. i see how long we can make that last and you know it, it's inevitable we've all we've had the bad days like the the thing that everyone's always worried about on the road happened to us on our way to Des Moines. Uh, break down, had to cancel the show, uh, tra scrapped our van, and used the U-Haul to get everything home. So like, we we know that the bad things happen. But in, uh, starting on uh, May in May 30th, we're going to be branching out on a tour, just a, a small like four-day run with our buds and growing from Madison. We're hometown homies, uh, so it's really exciting. Dude, they're, they're literally our best friends. Uh, can't wait to be making some music on the road with them. I love playing with these guys. I love hanging with these guys. We're going to be hitting Nina, Wisconsin. Then we're going back to Barrington, Illinois, to hit up Penny Road Pub and hang out with all our friends over there. That's going to be a hell of a time. I'm excited for that. And then we're going to be hitting Des Moines, going back to apologize for missing the show last time. <coughs> uh, we're going to make it up to them. We're going to be playing at Lefties in Des Moines. Uh, that's going to be really cool. Can't wait to see all those people there. We got a lot of people excited about that. I'm just really excited. Uh, shit, we're even car sharing. Yeah. We're, we're, doing, we're cab sharing. We, they got a big bus, so we're going to a hotel every night. They're going to... So, like, it's really, like... It's it's kind of, like, the one of, our, one of the all-time scenarios here because yeah. you know, we get to kind of split things down the middle and make, like, a really easy on all of us. Yeah. And that's just one of my favorite things about this city. It is, like... Everyone seems to be cool as shit, so I'm excited. We're playing with some cool people. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, last time we played there, people had had a good time. Hopefully, they come back, <laughs> and uh, we'll have a really good time. So. Yeah. If you guys are ever looking for anything down this way, like Southern Illinois or Indiana, let me know. I could probably help out with that. Pretty, you know. I, I will definitely keep your name in the running for that, dude. Uh, we are definitely always looking for new markets, especially in the Med Midwest, where that's what we're really trying to focus on, because this place is our home, and it's the place that's shown us the most love so far, so we, what we want to do is we want to just, like, show as much love to everybody in the Midwest as we can, really get our name out there around here before really branching any further. And, yeah. Uh, we just kind of, we want to make it so that, you know, because, you know, you, you can thrive, even uh, have a good career off of, off of a single, you know, uh, region you know yeah. uh lots of bands do it that's not necessarily where i want to cap myself out at but i i know that's what we need yeah. and these are the people that are going to matter the most and these are the ones that like, if we can if we can really bring them in with us you know and really like get the people that are from our region they, you know they're the ones who are going to push us and yeah they're going to be the reason why we we can go further than that and i mean that's that, that's kind of how you gotta you, you can't just because like when you do these massive these big ads and stuff for like like cover songs you just kind of you're, you're putting it everywhere you're getting yeah. it all over the country massive widespread but then we get to really focus on the people close to us by showing up in person uh, melting their faces as you will 
and uh, just you know, really getting to know people. And like, I feel like I, I, I don't really want to go super far away just yet because there's a lot of people that are a lot closer to me that would really appreciate seeing us play. So yeah, I, I'd much rather do that. You know? Yeah, and like if you do that and build a really strong base where you've got that in the middle, you get the bleed over aspect where your exactly. your home base just becomes bigger every time. Mm-hmm. That's and that's exactly how we want it to be. We're still working on building home base. That's what we're that's where we're at right now. Yeah. So and and we kind of we we've gotten a few offers here and there from like bands want to do tours with, and they sound like a lot of fun. You know. Yeah. It's not like they're, they're like, oh, we can. Because uh, we have to, we all have jobs, and we have to do the things we have to do, you know, to make this work. The whole idea is to not have jobs someday, right? That's yeah. that's like the, that's goal number one. Uh, but we've got to get there. So yeah, we, we have to we have to pay our dues, and we have to be smart. Because what a lot of what happens to a lot of really good music, man, is that they blow it all too soon, you know, and they they push themselves to the point where they cannot be profitable and cannot sustain that lifestyle and yeah you know we have the means to go out every couple of months and play a few tours uh play a few like small tours we have the means to like branch out and you know drive 500 miles to play a single show you know yeah. we have the means to do that kind of thing but we have to we have to work within our means and yeah. we're growing dude it's really cool i get i get to look at these numbers every day and see the actual growth that we've been achieving and it's humbling it's really cool to see yeah. but like it's still steady, you know, and, but there, you can't, you can't cut corners. Yes. It has to be, you have to, you have every aspect of your public image and your personal image, like the things, how you handle your own shit and how you handle the shit that people see have to be perfect, you know, uh, and you have, you just have to do things the right way. I'm not saying we do, but like we pay attention to every aspect. We, every, everything we do is done deliberately. Yeah. It's not, it, it may not be the proper thing and we're probably going to learn of how to do it better in the future, but it's done on purpose based on information that we've learned over the years. And that's, that's all we can is just like learn by the fuck ups. That's how, I mean, that's yeah, the process of elimination. And yeah. uh, as long as you just pay attention to the things you're doing, pay attention to what's working, pay attention to where you're putting your money and like what you're pushing like for instance yeah. should i be pushing my subscribers on my youtube channel for my youtube ad or should i be pushing the spotify place because what's going to end up being better for me mm-hmm. like what well, and either one of those options could be good options it all depends on what's working the best for you because every single person's audience is completely different and yes. you have to learn them that's why these people are so important to me because yes i need to learn everything i can about them so that like i can make better music for them i can sh- I, and I, I can be better for these people yeah so i uh, pay attention to your fucking audience <laughs> yeah <laughs> pay attention to the people who listen to your music and i uh, you may not love them like your siblings or the people who are actually in your circle, but there is a love there that exists for these people, and it's a real thing. It's not the same type of love, but it, it's it's kind of an understanding that we all have that, like, you know, we're all of us together equals what we become. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, you know, you may not be a majority shareholder, but we all have we all own a little bit of it. If you're a fan. Yeah. Like you all own a little bit of this. And yeah. that's something that you get to have. And I think that's something that kind of, the really, the true music fans and people who just love music, that's kind of how we all come together is the fact that we all just kind of, we love this. And because of that, we, we all just have this, I mean, obviously there's there's those who aren't, they're not the nicest people out there, but you know, we have with so many other people who, they, who can really can connect it with all this. Yeah. And I mean, that's really all I'm looking for is just to be able to connect with people through music and hopefully not have to work anymore. Because <laughs> it fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. Hate it. I really don't like it. It's See, unfortunate that it exists. I'm fortunate but, enough that I love my job. So I... Dude, uh, I don't have a bad job. It's just like... Hey, you, you would rather do that? Uh, yeah. I'd rather do pretty much anything else. Yeah. Be somewhere, I, be somewhere I don't want to be. Yeah. For good people, I, I actually I do have a really a really for I, I I'm I'm fortunate where I am. I work for a small family business. It's really cool. Uh, I, I I like it. I actually like the people I work with a lot. But I'd much rather be on the road because that sounds way more fun. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Being on tour um, is my favorite thing. Besides dogs, out of all the things that exist, <laughs> dogs are the, the best one. 
This is uh, uh, one thing that I usually ask people that is uh, usually pretty common. The answer is usually pretty common. Uh, when you get home off of the road, do you have that one or two day in, like onset depression? Oh dude. oh, dude, I like if I ever have to not do that, I'm gonna be angry. I'm gonna be real upset. Like, I, I I understand that it could be a possibility with just like the realities of the bills that we all need to pay. But like, if I if I can handle it, I always put like at least a day, at least a, a full day of sitting on my ass, not not packing up practice space, not putting the gear away, not returning the van. A full day of sitting on my ass doing jack shit. That's that's like mandatory for me. I like work that into my like my vacation days. So it's part of it. Absolutely. Like I'll leave. I'll go on tour an hour after my shift. I don't care. But when I get back, my ass is camping right the fuck here. I'm going to smoke as much weed as I can handle, and I'm going to watch some stupid-ass TV show, and I'm going to dig it. I'm not going to talk to a single goddamn person. And it's going to be wonderful. And then the next day, do you feel depressed that you're not on the road anymore? Oh, yeah. Because by the end of the night, you're just like, why am I not playing a show? Yep. Like, this is dumb. Why would I never not play shows? This is stupid. I don't like it. I don't like it. And that, that makes going to work so much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because when you're there, it's like, fucking okay. Just, you want to buy some shit? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I work at an office. I do a warehouse and office work. So, like, I'm behind a computer a lot, just plugging away at the QuickBooks and shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I work uh, in an orthotics lab. I, I okay. do uh, custom orthotics and shoe modifications for, like, diabetic patients and amputees and things like that. Wow, that's really meaningful work, dude. That's cool. It's really fulfilling, actually. It's the first job I've ever had that I actually have a sense of accomplishment when I go home. That's, man, that's something. I mean, for me, it's always been the music, but, like, that's all I, that's always really ever focused on. But, like, I have so much respect for people like you, man, people who, like, who can literally put others before themselves regardless of what of what comes back on it. And, like, that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. People like you are a, a rare commodity. Thank you for doing what you do. Like, Thanks, really. man. Let's go. Thank you. I'm sure a lot more people agree with me, too, so I don't. It's fun. <laughs> That's well, cool I, shit, I, I appreciate anybody that appreciates anything that I do at all. That's what I appreciate about you. So, uh, what do you guys have anything new coming up that you can talk about musically? Like maybe like the studio process or anything like that? Um, you'll be hearing some new tunes for us uh, within a month. I can probably, I hope, I'm hoping I can say that. Uh, we're currently, we have the song all finished. I believe I sent it your way. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance to check it out yet. Very nice. Very nice. You like? Ver I like. How much? Very nice. How much? Well, I, I'll tell you, it's my one ninety five. But uh, <laughs> uh, it'll be everywhere soon enough. Uh, we're going to be filming a video uh, with Eddie Curran up here pretty soon. Really excited to work with him. Uh, I'm not going to say what it's called or when it's coming out, but uh, we just kind of we're not really. We don't. We've decided on just not really doing like campaigns anymore. Just really, just kind of like, hey, here's some music, dig it. Uh, so that'll be out when it's out. Yeah. I can tell you where, I'm not gonna tell you how, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm excited for it, man. I am. I'm really, really proud of this song. Um, I put a lot into it, and I put a lot. I put a lot of negative energy into this song. I'll, I'll be honest. I put a lot of negative energy into the song. Uh, I was really trying to be honest about myself and the things that I've done in the past and just like own it because the thing that I hate more than anything is someone who's fake. Yeah. And I don't care what I am. I swear to God, I'm never going to be fake about it. Yeah. I promise. If I'm a piece of shit, I'm a piece of shit. If I'm a fucking saint, that's what I am. Yeah. Like I'm going to be whatever I am and I'm not going to be fake about it. And sometimes there's, there's things that I, I need to own. You know, yeah. we all have things that we have to own, like mistakes we've made, people we've hurt, yep. and like, that's what I poured into this song. It was just like uh, one of my one of my favorite lines in this song is, "If there's a God, I'm convinced that He'd want nothing to do with me." And yeah. it's just this kind of the simple little line, and that I just I just kind of latched onto, and it really just like it fueled a lot of the song. Uh, I love it. Uh, I I'm really proud of it. I think it's our best song to date. Yeah. Um, 
and I'm really excited for people to hear it, dude. Yeah. I can really relate to that because I, I was just explaining to somebody last night. I had a four-hour group chat last night uh, to really talk <laughs> about some things with uh, Shed Rat Industries and, and different things going on. And um, one of the things that... Uh, I was talking about was they asked me why I am the way I am, why I want everything to be the way that I am, why I'm so generous, why I do the things that I do. And I tell them, I, I haven't all like, I've, I've never really been a bad person, but I could have been a much better person. And I'm trying from, from this point on to be that better person. And it's all about my, my story that, you know, my life story when I'm done and they close my book, what's in my book, man? Like, that's something that I'm always yeah. thinking about and I can't ever express it the way that I want to. And it just come out right when I was thinking about all that stuff. And I was like, this is why I do it, man. Like I went through a bad divorce and my whole life changed and I kind of got a fresh start on life. And so I decided I was going to do something with it instead of just being somebody living. Absolutely, man. I know exactly. Yeah. I feel that shit so hard. Like it, with, with a book, it's like, yeah, you can, one thing, um, uh, do you know who the color morale is? I'm sure you've heard of them. You're from kind of the area. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, Garrett Rapp, he was one of my favorite lyricists. Uh, he's got a lot of really cool raw, raw type of lyrics, right? And one of the, one of the things he said, one of the songs is that you can still live a positive life in the negative mind. Now that's not an out there concept, but like it's something that you know, it just kind of, it hit me when I heard it. And that, and what honestly, like just the thought that, that, that sentence repeating in my mind did a lot for me you know it wasn't like the band saved my life or anything like that but like that sentence playing that to myself hearing that for myself often enough like because it what you do ultimately is what matters the inner monologue that happens in your head it may be it, it can be whatever it is you know we shouldn't know what that is honestly it's there's some terrible things that happen in everybody's heads but what you, what you do is what ultimately matters and you can still do positive things while while being in a negative mindset or being maybe even like being just being a negative person like you can still do positive things even if you're if you're dealing with uh depression or anxiety or any type of any type of antisocial sort of ism that is out there um and but you you can still make decisions yeah. we have this crazy cool ability to make choices and most of us waste it Mm -hmm. uh, but you can make choices to do good things and yes. those choices don't have to be the thing that you think like just because you don't think it's going to help everybody like do the good thing regardless just because it might not matter do the good thing do the right thing yeah uh, no one might notice do the good thing it might fucking suck do the good thing yeah. you know you can still make choices and it's, it's a beautiful thing because we it's it's such a free thing the ability to make a choice yeah. and yet so few people use it and that's and, and a lot of people use it incorrectly or wrong or deliberately for for wrong but like we have it, like i said it's just we, you can make the, you can make good choices regardless of the mindset that you're in you know? yeah and, for and that's me, something that's not good you know like uh having the tendencies that i have and having the addictions that i have or have had like um there's something like you, you can choose the better route you can mm. always be doing something you, you can always be better you know there's some there's something you can do to do something good I yeah guess. and for me it was uh it was more about like i i have three kids now and i need to i've got a two-year-old an almost three-year-old and an 11 year old and uh -huh. i i have to think about what are they seeing what is what kind of man a you know, is daddy, what kind of, you know, like, yeah. well, I have to think about that too. Not only that, but leading by example for people in shed rat industries and, you know, just in the community in general, just trying to make that contagious. I'm very, very, very firm believer in the pay it forward method, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, don't expect anything back. Like someone, maybe someone will see that you're that person. Maybe somebody won't Yeah. But, like, do it anyway, because eventually people are going to start taking taking notice yeah i actually get in trouble a lot by the guys in the group chat and stuff where they yell at me for being so generous and for being like that they're like no man you deserve to get yours you work your ass off for a lot of stuff and you just you don't want nothing I back i believe that shit too i do i believe that you know 
I want people to purchase my music. I believe that I worked my ass off for it. I believe that's fair. I or or honestly, I'll show you my music for the most part. Like as long as it's released, I'll probably send it to you if you like ask for it. Yeah. Uh, but like, um, buy it. That'd be super cool. <laughs> I much more appreciate it because it's like. You know, I put my time, my money, and, and my soul into making stuff for you to enjoy. Yeah. And I love it that you enjoy it regardless of if you ever spend a dime on me. Yeah. But if you do spend that dime on me, I'm going to remember your name. I'm going to remember who you are. And I'm going to say thank you every time I see you because it's like you that $20 got me down the road. That $20 got me exactly. where I needed to be. And that meant a lot to me at that time. Like, dude, there's been time when a T-shirt sale has saved our lives on the road. Yeah. It's happened to every single one of us. Where that one T-shirt, you know, suddenly you have food. Like, yep. I, I have lived off of Nutella and Jimmy John's bread for six weeks at a point. Like it is not yeah, like three weeks, but it was it's not a pleasant experience. I do not recommend it, but it will work. Ours was peanut butter and hot dogs, man. Ooh, dude. See, like, okay, I have a little bit of like the outdoorsy know-how, so I can rig a campfire out of pretty much anything. Yeah. So I, I'm always good with as long as we have like if we have like a twenty dollar day budget for the four of us, I can have us. We can have ourselves eating my cakes. Yeah. Like, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Yeah, we like, do these things called hobo meals where we get some aluminum foil and we we get a meat and some sort of vegetable, at least two of them, and then whatever seasoning possible. And then we can just chop it all up and throw it in there and throw it over a fire for like 45 minutes and we eat yep. like kings. Yep. Dude, for us, it's like you, we get like a pound of ground beef and we get a loaf of bread and we get some ketchup. But yep. like, not so bad. I mean, we got we probably got salt packets we can jack from somewhere. Yep. You know, we get, we'll make it work. I mean, I, get, I cook less. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I've caught myself fishing a time or two. Yeah? Yeah. I've heard. I don't know if I ever trust myself to bring a fishing pole onto it. It'd get fucked up somehow, or I'd fuck something up. Uh, it was I'm one of those little fishing. compactable ones, and like you could I just pull it out. So it was all right. It was about the size I'm of a flashlight. Been good at fishing. I, it's been one of those things that has always evaded me, like the skill of fishing. I don't. Know, I've done it like twice where I've actually gotten something. So I, I am not all that is man when it comes to fishing, but. Uh, you know, I can hunt all right, so yeah. But also, you can't bring guns on tour, and that's not probably a good thing. Yeah. So, Better brush up your uh, knife throwing skills. I actually can use a real slingshot. I have that ability. Uh, me and my best friend, we uh, we went through a very rough experience together, and we lost a lot. We lost our apartments. We lost uh, people we were seeing. We we lost everything essentially so we packed everything we had into my little pontiac two-door and we drove uh 12 hours down to southern missouri and his mother had a property out in the ozarks and it was just just like 12, 20 acres of land out in the middle of bumfuck 50 miles from anywhere and we threw we pitched a tent on the top of the hill and just like the first week sucked because we had to hunt to get our food and we were really bad at it but by the end of the summer we were pretty good i figured out how to uh I use a slingshot. It was really cool. I got a couple of squirrels using one of those. Oh yeah. So that's coming That's cool as shit. But also, like, if I'm about to get bugged or some shit, no one's about to wait for me to like hold out. Let me let me grab my slingshot. All right, you stand right there. Don't move. Don't move. All right. You better not run more than thirty feet away. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, you you can chuck those things. I, you can chuck uh, like a two ounce stone, like a good two hundred yards, easy. Yeah. Like with, this is gone. It, it's all centrifugal force. Yeah. So it just just zips out. It was really cool. I mean, you're not accurate at that distance, but shit, it's cool to watch go. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was always uh, it was always um, knife throwing and things. Like I, I'm, I'm I really good. It, but I liked it. Yeah, knife throwing and uh, and like axes or tomahawks, stuff like that. Like, I'm pretty good at that. That's dope. That's a that's a useful skill. It could be. Yeah. I would just start being able to throw things well would be a good skill. You know, like that's a cool thing to do. Like I grew up a pitcher and a quarterback and like all that other stuff. So I I've been trained my whole life to throw things at smaller yeah. things. <laughs> that's fair. That works. That's cool as shit though. I, I can kind of throw a football all right, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like throwing around my friends, but, like, you know, I, I got, I, I just, I don't know, I don't play much anymore. It's not really, 
Yeah. Really, really I'm not, I think I played soccer for a while in high school. Uh, as about as much sporting as I did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm from a very Packer family. So. Yeah. Uh, one of my brothers is a Minnesota Vikings fan, so it's, it's always fun when. Oh, I bet. Uh, whatever that's going on, I'm just sitting back eating popcorn, watching the whole thing go down. It's great. Yeah, my dad's a Vikings fan, uh, so I can understand some of that stuff. <laughs> of course, nobody up here likes the Bears, so you're all kind of shit on over there. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't liked a bear since '85. <laughs> it's been a minute, huh? Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, do you have anything you want to plug or anything, man, before uh, uh, we wrap this bad boy up? Do you want to check out our merch store? It's archersapparel.bigcartel.com. Uh, if you want to find out anything about us, go to our Facebook page. Uh, we have any all of us up there. I believe we even have links to our personal Facebook pages up there, so you can just hit us up for no good reason. Uh, you can send feet pics, but I don't really want them. Uh, yeah, uh, Grab a grab a T-shirt, grab a CBE. We're currently selling tickets. Uh, well, this will be over by then. Uh, we have a show coming up. You see, this is coming out late in May or late April. It's going to probably be first week week in May. First week in May. Okay, we've got this the tour coming up at the end of the month. Uh, we're going to be hitting some really uh, hitting some really cool shows with our buds and growing. So stay tuned for that. Like us on Facebook. Honestly, like us on Facebook so we can tell you all about our shit. Uh, and that that'll be a lot more helpful than anything else. Just Hit us up on Facebook. You send us a message, we'll respond to you there, or you can just message us personally. We'll respond to you each and every time, I promise. Um, so, yeah, you got questions, hit me up. If you want to check out our music, we're everywhere you need us to be. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for listening, and thank you for so much for letting me come on. It's been really fun getting a chance to get to know you and talk, talk to you and all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude, I really appreciate it. I've, I've really enjoyed this. Yeah, dude, it's, it felt like I, I feel like I really got to connect to you a little bit. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I do this quite often and I always ask, you know, people, you, you know, you're more than welcome to come back at any time or be involved with anything we got going on at all. We try to all be right. silly and have a lot of fun with things and like we've got different things going on all the time, man. If you just want to pop in and, you know, Absolutely. dip a ball in and bounce out, you know. Right on. Dude, I, I could be all about that shit, dude. Uh, you said, uh, what, what, where, where are you out of again? What was that? What time? Palestine, Palestine, Illinois. Palestine, Illinois. That's Southern Illinois, right? Yeah. Well, shit, man. I will be hitting you up next time we're in the area. I promise you that. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for hitting me up, dude. I really appreciate you letting me come on. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I really like... Well, I'm so grateful you let me be a part of it. That's really cool. And uh, definitely going to be keeping up with you, bro. For sure. Yeah. Thank you for being such an awesome, humble dude and making all that awesome music, man. Uh, happy to do it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy what I get to do. It's it's nothing crazy. Like we're nothing special yet. We want to be someday, but like even just that I get to do this a little bit is is so it's, it's so cool. Like I have a cool fucking life, dude, because of you all, from everyone who listens and uh, like you all you all like fucking dope as shit. I really enjoy it. I may go not, I may work nine to five, but I feel like a rock star some days, you know. Yeah. And that's all I can fucking ask for. I'm I'm not a rock star. Don't, don't I will just put that out there right now. But I feel like one some days, then that makes me feel cool. So I'm all about that. There you go, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Hell yeah, dude. Really, me too. Thank you. Well, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in for this episode of The Whole Conversation. Stick around for a video from the featured artist. Thanks. <laughs>